Hello ladies and gentlemen. On this occasion, we will discuss the anatomy of the shoulder joint, focusing on the anatomic details that an anesthesiologist should be aware of in order to perform regional anesthesia techniques effectively in this area. The glenohumeral joint is a synovial joint that connects the upper limb to the axial skeleton. It is a spheroidal joint formed by the glenoid fossa of the scapula, the glena, and the head of the humerus. The glenohumeral joint the most significant of the shoulder is the joint with the greatest range of motion in the human body. However, this high mobility of the shoulder comes at a cost, stability, since the bony surfaces provide little support. This imbalance between great mobility and low stability makes it particularly vulnerable to a large number of injuries. In terms of innervation, to be able to determine the most suitable regional technique at each moment. The cervical plexus is a network of nerves that emerge from the cervical region of the spinal cord, C1 to C4. It is divided into two main parts, the superficial cervical plexus and the deep cervical plexus. The deep cervical plexus is located deep beneath the prevertebral fascia, and it is formed by the anterior branches of the upper three or four cervical nerves. It gives rise to motor branches that innervate the muscles of the neck. The superficial cervical plexus is primarily formed by the anterior branches of the upper four cervical nerves and gives rise to cutaneous nerves that supply sensory innervation to the skin of the neck and the posterior part of the head. The brachial plexus is a complex network of nerves that originates from the spinal nerves of the cervical and thoracic regions, C5 to T1. It is responsible for the innervation of the upper limb, including the shoulder, arm, and hand. The brachial plexus is formed by the merging and branching of these spinal nerves, giving rise to several major nerves that control motor and sensory functions of the upper limb. Various nerves originating from the brachial plexus collaborate harmoniously to orchestrate precise motor functions and sensory perception within the shoulder region. This intricate coordination enables a diverse spectrum of movements while concurrently upholding the stability of the shoulder joint. The supraclavicular nerve plays a role in innervating certain areas of the skin in the upper chest and shoulder region. The supraclavicular nerve has three branches, the medial, intermediate, and lateral branches. The medial branch or medial supraclavicular nerve supplies sensory innervation to the skin over the upper part of the chest near the sternoclavicular joint. The intermediate branch or intermediate supraclavicular nerve provides sensory innervation to the skin over the upper and middle parts of the shoulder. The lateral branch or lateral supraclavicular nerve innervates the skin over the lateral part of the shoulder. The brachial plexus provides motor innervation to various muscles in the shoulder region, supraspinatus and infraspinatus, deltoid and teres minor muscles, coracobrachialis, biceps, brachii, and serratus anterior muscles, all of them responsible for providing the enormous mobility and stability to the shoulder. The main nerves involved in the joint innervation of the shoulder are derived from the brachial plexus, and they play crucial roles in providing both sensory and motor innervation to the shoulder joint. These nerves include suprascapular nerve, axillary nerve, upper subscapular nerve, lateral pectoral nerve, and for some authors, musculocutaneous nerve. These nerves work together to ensure the proper functioning and sensation of the shoulder joint. They play a critical role in both the voluntary movements of the shoulder and the perception of sensory stimuli, contributing to the overall stability and mobility of the shoulder joint complex. This distribution of joint innervation does not occur homogeneously. Not all the nerves involved have the same clinical relevance. The suprascapular nerve predominantly innervates the posterosuperior region of the glenohumeral joint, constituting approximately 70% of its total innervation, as suggested by the majority of authors. In contrast, the axillary nerve contributes around 20% of innervation to the lower part of the joint. The residual 10% is divided among the lateral pectoral and subscapular nerves, which collectively provide innervation to the anterior aspect of the joint. According to certain authors, the musculocutaneous nerve, via the long head of the biceps tendon, may additionally play a role in providing innervation to a minor portion of the anterior capsule. The suprascapular nerve emerges as the third collateral branch from the upper trunk. It diverges from the brachial plexus, distancing itself until it assumes a posterior position to traverse through the supraspinous notch. Once it passes through the supraspinous notch, passing beneath the superior transverse ligament of the scapula, 
a muscular branch for the supraspinatus and the first articular branch detach. It descends along the posterior part of the scapula, passing beneath the scapular spine and crosses another notch, the spinoglenoid notch. Here, a new articular branch separates along with the muscular branch for the infraspinatus muscle. The axillary nerve originates from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus, which is formed by nerve roots C5 and C6. It descends down along the posterior aspect of the shoulder, running over the surface of the subscapularis muscle. As it continues its course, the axillary nerve becomes posterior, wrapping around the surgical neck of the humerus, the neck of the humerus just below the shoulder joint. The nerve then proceeds along the medial side of the humerus. Before becoming entirely posterior, the axillary nerve may give off an anterior articular branch. This branch can be involved in innervating certain parts of the shoulder joint. When the nerve reaches its most posterior segment, it bifurcates, sending off branches to innervate deltoid and terens minor muscles, as well as issuing a posterior articular branch. The lateral pectoral nerve, once detached from the lateral cord, pierces the pectoral fascia to join the medial pectoral nerve and form the ansa pectoralis. Before doing so, it sends articular branches to the anterior surface of the glenohumeral and acromioclavicular joints. The subscapular nerve divides into two branches. The upper subscapular branch specifically innervates the subscapularis muscle. The lower subscapular branch gives off small articular branches to innervate the anterior surface of the shoulder joint. The musculocutaneous nerve, a terminal branch of the lateral cord, provides innervation to the three muscles within the anterior compartment of the arm, the coracobrachialis, biceps, brachii, and brachialis muscles. Although some authors argue against direct innervation of the shoulder joint by the musculocutaneous nerve, its significant contributions to the muscles of the arm play a crucial role in shoulder movement and overall function.